Welcome along guys. This is my little preview of some of the best bikes I'm looking forward to in 2020 out of the bikes which have been released so far at the Eichma show in Italy. So sit back, stay tuned, let's look at some delicious motorcycles. So starting off with one of my favourite ever bikes, the Super Duke R. I owned one of these, the original one, the 24. 415 version absolutely loved it sold it because it was a little bit agricultural bike's been through several generations now and they have absolutely nailed it with the two version this three version must be incredible 177 brake horsepower 140 newton meters of torque not much change in power from last year's up a couple of brake horsepower that's all actually down a couple of torques as well because of that new exhaust the new emission regulations for euro 5 the bike has to meet it's now got the five inch tft new headlights new styling the frame is very similar to the old rc8 frame but but it's actually two kilos lighter and three times stiffer than the old Super Duke. The rear subframe is now composite, gone is the trellis design, so it's lighter. The fuel tank, not only has it gone from plastic to steel, it's also gone from 18 litres to 16 litres. So it's lost a bit of capacity, but it should still do about 160 miles on a tank. The braking has been addressed by new Brembo Stylema calipers. The old bike brakes were never the best out there. With the Stylemas on it, it should move it up a notch. Very, very excited to see how this thing stops, goes and handles. The bike has the same IMU, the 9.1 Bosch system. Slight revisions again for this year, just making it work slightly better. The wheelie control, the way the traction control works. It also now has buttons on the switch gear to adjust your traction control on the fly, like the RS34 and the Tuono does. And also a button whereby you can store your favorite settings. So perhaps a button you can program to be wheelie control off. Very nice. I think the aim for this bike for this year is to tighten it all up because it was always never the sharpest handling bike. It was a beautiful bike to ride, but it wasn't quite as sharp as the likes of the Tuono. So hopefully now this has brought that whole package together, made it tighter, more performance focused and very nice to ride. Next up, sticking with KTM, we have the new Duke 890R. This this thing could be amazing. The old eight, the old 790 Duke was fantastic bike, very, very precise, a really lovely ride on the road. But it was let down a little bit by poor suspension and cheap brakes. Power has increased. A 16 brake horsepower peak, we're now up to 119 brake horsepower with this engine because of the capacity increase. And also 199 newton meters of torque at 7,750 uh, 7, revs. There were two things which let this bike down. The suspension, which was non-adjustable on the original version. This now has fully adjustable suspension, including, I believe, preload adjustment. Absolutely fantastic. And also the brakes were a bit weak on this bike. They felt a little bit wooden. You really had to pull the lever. Now this has the Brembo Stylemas. So the braking should be also taken care of. So what with an additional 16 brake horsepower, and three kilograms lighter, this bike should be very, very interesting and, and perhaps the perfect road bike. It also features sticky Michelin Power Cup 2 tires. Mm -mm -mm. Moving away from KTM and on to Ducati. First of all, we have a look at the new V4 Super Naked Ducati. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It is the Panier Gali V4 engine putting out the same 217 brake horsepower, 220 horsepower when fitted with the optional full Akropovich. This thing is going to be insane. To try and control all that power, they have added these winglets, and apparently at 150 miles an hour, these winglets provide 30 kg of downforce. This thing is gonna be sharp on track and on the road. It's an absolute monster. But the question will remain, is, 200, is over 200 horsepower too much for a naked bike when this thing is very, very light? KTM have the Wasp headlight. It seems that Ducati has gone with the Ant. Definitely an Ant-like resemblance to the front lighting cow. This bike will be available in two versions, a standard and the S. The standard will have the Showa suspension where the S will have the e Olin's EC2 electronic suspension, the same as what's on the Tuono. Both bikes will come with full electronic suite, 
six, six access IMUs, launch control, cornering ABS, all of the usual electronics these days. And I am quite excited about trying this bike out, but I do think it could be too mental. Is over 200 horsepower on a naked bike gonna be too much? Wings or not, we will see. The other new bike I'm very interested in from Ducati is the new V2. Looks a little bit sexy. It's got the bodywork from the V4 Ducati. Nice grin there. It also comes in red. <laughs> They're calling it the V2 because it, obviously there's the V4, the V2, because it is a twin. The big news with this one for me is the styling update and they've also managed to make the exhaust look decent. Gone are the two separate end cans and we now have the under pan exhaust. So the bike is back to looking sexy. This is gonna be a fantastic bike. You know, that, that power on the road is, is the perfect road bike. So I'm really make, gonna need to make sure I get my ass on one of these next year and test it out because it looks rather sexy. 155 brake horsepower at 10,000 revs. Perfect amount of power for the road. It's a five brake horsepower power hike over the old 959. So, and that's with the new Euro 5 emissions. The full electronic suite, as you would expect, cornering ABS, quick shifter up and down, race mode, street modes, and the four and a half inch TFT display as seen, of course, on the V4. An excellent bike, can't wait to test it. Moving on to the Aprilia stand. What have Aprilia got in store for us? Well, the RR RSV4 now has wings, now comes with wings and a rather sexy paint scheme, but I don't recommend riding it in red high heels. The RSV4 factory now comes with the Olin's EC2 suspension, like on the Tuono, but still we've got no facelift of those lights. We've still got halogen lights on these bikes. We are really overdue a facelift on the RSV4 and the Tuono. But the big news from Aprilia is this, the RS660. This is the new middleweight twin from Aprilia. It basically uses the front two cylinders from the RSV4, which are then slightly overboard to raise it up to 660cc. It makes 98 brake horsepower, which for a twin is actually class leading when you consider the MT-07 only makes 74 brake horsepower. No news on the weight of this yet, but it's gonna be around the 180 kilo mark quite light, also comes with full electronic suite, cornering ABS traction control, wheelie control, up and down quick shifter. Aprilia are saying it is a road bike primarily, but it's also going to be good on the track. I think this bike is set to rejuvenate the middleweight class. I really hope so, because it's a class which is fantastic for road bikes. Exciting. I will be riding this as soon as it is available in the dealers, and it is, it is one of the top bikes I'm looking forward to for next year beautiful. Moving on to the big H, what have they got in store for us for 2020? Well the big news for me, well it isn't this, <laughs> it isn't the new Africa Twin, fantastic as it is, it isn't also a Cal Crutchlow's bike, it is the new Fireblade. We have been waiting a long long time for this bike. When the new Blade came out last time I was a little bit disappointed because it was really a rehashed old Fireblade. This is actually a new machine. Honda are claiming 214 brake horsepower at 14,500 RPM, but it doesn't come with any sort of VVT system, so it could end up being a little bit peaky, we will see. The weight of it is actually slightly heavier than last year's bike. Last year they didn't have the power, so they put all their efforts into making it as light as possible. The new blade weighs in at just over 200 kilos, where the old bike was in the 190 kilo range. So it's put on about five kilos or so, but we can forgive it with that extra power hike. The power to weight ratio is still gonna be much better than last year's. The bike features wings. Marquez likes it, but why wouldn't he? It does look absolutely amazing, but it does have a little bit of an Optimus Prime look to it in those colors. But I'm really excited to try this. I really hope that Honda have hit the nail on the head here and produced a, a blade worthy of the name. Two versions, it will come in the RR, RSP and just the RR. <laughs> Main differences between them is the uh, suspension. It's Shura suspension on the standard, Olin's electronic suspension on the RRR. The bike was inspired by their RCV 213 MotoGP replica bike. You can see even the color scheme is very similar to that bike. It's gonna be an interesting one. I can't wait to ride it. It's got a lot of diamond-like coating, DLC coatings used inside the engine. It's obviously a high revving 
engine this. So um, the only thing that worries me about this bike is, is it going to be just all too peaky and there's going to be a real lack of mid-range. We will see. I will be riding this bike as soon as it's available. Heading over to Kawasaki, what have they in store for us for 2020? Well, the big news for me is the ZH2 using the H2 engine out of the SX. Looks of this bike are splitting opinion. It does look a little bit bulky. I'm not sure it's as beautiful as the H2 and I'm, and I'm not sure the styling has quite hit the nail on the head, but this bike is gonna be 200 horsepower, 140 newton meters of torque. It's gonna to be an absolute monster. 100 foot-pounds of torque and over 200 brake horsepower on tap. And the thing about the H2s is you can get more power easily by doing a, a simple reflash and a chip tune. You can be up to 250 horsepower, no problem at all. It's 17 kilograms lighter than the H2SX, which is 239 kilos but it still weighs in at a rather hefty 222 kilos. When you compare that to the lightweight Ducati Street Fighter, uh, even the Super Duke has lost weight. The Super Duke is under 200 kilos now. This does seem a little heavy, but with that power plant, it will make, I think, a very stable, powerful machine. So again, as soon as these are available, I will be riding one, and I am rather excited. 197 brake horsepower. Oh yes. The bike has been built with some compromises in mind. It's not all out like the, uh, the original H2. Gone is the single-sided swinging arm. We now have a dual-sided swinging arm, very similar to the ZX10. That's obviously to reduce the cost of this bike. This is gonna be around the 13,000 pound to 14,000 pound mark. It'll probably compete directly with the Super Duke. It will be cheaper than the Ducati Street Fighter. So it will be the cheapest of the monstrously powerful Super Nakeds. This could be a 200 horsepower Naked for around 14,000 pounds. Well, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed my little preview of the bikes which are coming in 2020. It's not all of the new bikes which are coming out. It's ones I'm most interested in. If there's any I've missed which you want to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can do a preview feature of it. But thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I will be ride reviewing all of these bikes and perhaps even purchasing one of these new machines for the garage to, to see how I can, how they, what they like to live with over a longer period because I do have an itch for a new motorcycle. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.